that photograph with looks like a 15 year old with the apron on that's your father that's my father what was his name william he came to bampton as an apprentice to mr dutton and he was oh, really? an apprentice there for five years yes this was back before the the uh, before the war yes because let me think he, he was born in 1887 and he was 15 so 1887 and 15, 1902, is that? Yeah. Something like that. He, he came to Mr. Dutton for an apprenticeship. Yes. And he was there so, for five years. So when you say before the war, you mean before World War One? Before World War One, that's yeah. when he was there, yes. Yes, yes. And uh, then after his apprenticeship, he went to take a job or to further his uh, education. About, the shop and one thing or another. Yeah. He went to Leamington. Oh yes, yeah. And he was there. And then of course the World War One came on and he was of course he went into the army. And then yes. when he came out of the army, yeah. he came back home and well, I don't know what he did actually then, but Did he, he come when you say he came home, he came home to Bampton? Came back, came back to Bampton as far yeah. as I know. I don't yeah. know. Um, my grandfather lived, you see, up at Church View. Oh, did he? And, uh, Which yeah, house where, did he where, live in? He lived in where Miss... Well, it used to be two... used to be one house, but Miss Winship was lives in one. Oh, yes. It was uh, Leighton Cottage and Corner Cottage. That was all oh, in yes. one. Yes. Well, my grandfather, how or why, what his circumstances were, but he came to Bampton. Mm. And he uh, had an egg collecting business then. He used to go around with a pony and trap. Did he? And collect the eggs from yeah. farmers or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. take them home and pack them up and take them down to Bampton Station, put them on the train to go to London or wherever. Isn't that amazing? So, uh... There's two historic bits there, you know, pony and trap yeah. and Bampton Station. Well, the pony used to keep the pony down in the paddock that I've still got down the lane. Oh, down really? There. Down there, yes. Yeah. And uh, then, after that, well, then my grandfather was, of course, he, he retired from that. And father came back. When my father, he uh, was courting my mother from, uh, she was a builder's daughter at Cirencester. And uh, well, this he was courting before they went, before he went into the army, but they decided not to get married until he came back out of the army. And then, when he did come out, he was demobbed and came out, they were looking round for somewhere and they were looking through because he wanted to get out of business back in grocery and that. And Mr. Dutton's shop that was up for sale. Oh was it? here. Okay. So they thought we like it so they got a mortgage and came to, that's how they came back to Bampton. That's very interesting. Um, now how come it kept the name Dutton? Well they kept the name I suppose the uh, a lot of these firms, knew it. you buy the name with the shop, I suppose, yes. or, or with yeah. these businesses. A lot of the businesses keep the same name. He yeah. didn't change it. He kept it. He was known as Dutton's and he kept it as Dutton's. So, so he came back after the war, bought the shop. How long did he work there for, well, have it for? Well, you see, when he came, he didn't get married till he was, I think it was about 36, I think he was then. And then I wasn't born until mother was 42. 41 yeah. so yeah. then they carried on during the, the through the second, second war. war and uh, of course he was they were busy in the shop and that all the time with and I wasn't interested in the shop at all I wanted to go out into farming or something yes like. you wanted the outdoor Down life there and wanted an outdoor life can you remember about the shop though because as I remember well, it I could remember yeah it being you know being I used to but I, we lived out at the back of the shop, of course, but yeah. I wasn't very often that I took it, you know, did any errands for him because yeah. he had an errand boy and, uh, and Godfrey Horn used to work in the shop, but he oh, went yeah. into the army, of course, he didn't come back. So. I didn't know that. Is that Eileen Horn's father? No. Not related? No. Well, his, her cousin, I should think, Eileen. Right. I think it was her cousin, yes. Yes. Yeah, there was... It was Philip Horn. He was. It was the last one. It, it uh, 
Clownfield. He lived yeah. Philip Horn. Yeah. And uh, Godfrey and Jack. Jack used to live down the uh, Aston Road. Oh, yes. yes. But Godfrey was the older one. And uh, he went into the army and unfortunately he was killed in yeah. Normandy, I think it was. But I came here in the 50s. I can remember, I mean, you don't see them anymore. A bacon slicer. Oh, yes, yes, the old Burkle bacon slicer, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember those, yeah. Father, I was always, well, every evening when they finished, you had to clean the bacon slicer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huge machine. And yes. it was done with the handle. Yeah, you used to turn the handle, yeah. So, yeah go, well, I remember doing that to turn in the handle yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, those were the days when things were not wrapped up. Oh no, they weren't wrapped up. No, there was there was no pre-packaging. You had to, uh, well, weigh it all off and put it into bags. There was nothing came pre-packed. It was tins of biscuits, and they were weighed out and loose tea and everything else was loose was biscuits. All loose. It was all loose then in those yeah. days that I can remember of it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, butter, was butter. That, yeah, butter was packed. I think in half pounds. I think. I remember when they had to do the rationing, I think they were only, the rations were only about two ounces a week of butter and two ounces of lard and uh, about half, a quarter pound of margarine, I think. Well, they were in these quarter, uh, half pounds and they used to cut them into four, I know, yeah. to do them. And they had to be wrapped up again, you see. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, can you remember, I can vaguely remember a ration, can you remember the rationing system? Can you remember how it worked? What, what, um... Well, they, you were issued with ration books and you had coupons for, and if you, uh, when you went shopping, you had to, if you had your two ounces, what is it, you had to uh, give a little coupon for it. And then, and then they were all uh, collected and, and uh, counted up at the end of the week and sent away and then for what they sent the coupons back, you got some more. To replace it. So is this your parents sitting up in so the night? So oh, they were, at nights, yes, they were, uh, when I was going to bed, they, so they were sitting doing coupons and one thing and another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so it'd be a whole lot of extra work, wouldn't it? All oh, that it, paperwork. yes, they, were, they didn't have time for any sort of home life, really, sort of thing. It, yeah. Didn't have time for holidays. I don't think they ever had a, a holiday. I think I went away on holiday. Once, when I was oh, seven, eight, or nine, sort of thing, I went went down to Western Supermare. I think my mother and her friend took me and her two daughters down to Western Supermare. That's the only holiday I can ever remember having for a week. Amazing, isn't it? People go on it holidays is. all the time now, don't they? Yes. All over the world. The world's such a small place now. Isn't it, it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we used to just go to Western or Blackpool or something. I can remember somebody called Mr Jolly there. Do you remember him? I can remember Mr Jolly, yes. He came there after Father had retired. And, yeah. Um, Mr D Mr Jenkinson bought it off Father when he sold up. Mr Jenkinson from Blackmore, that was the... Oh, is that uh, the mushroom farm well, man? Well, his... It's not the mushroom, that was... Uh, Stuart Wood has got mushroom farm, oh. but they, they were up at mushroom farm. They did have that, but it was Mill Farm, Black Borton, and Mr. Jenkins oh, yeah. lived out, and he had two sons. Yeah. And um, one married an honour from East Leach, and uh, he's still alive. But the other one that stayed at the farm at Black Borton, uh, Rex Jenkins, and he married uh, Molly Wilmer. Oh. But uh, he died only a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah. But uh, Mr. Jenkinson, he was a market garden, uh, and he was going up to London uh, every morning to buy vegetables and uh, outlets and yeah. shops and one thing or another. Just interesting to hear you talking about the other side of the counter yeah. and what they had to do with all the coupons, all those coupons. and the, the yeah. hours of work. Mm -hmm. and well, was I was born in 28, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, I can remember ration books too very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, uh, you were talking about Mr. Jenkins said was had a market garden, but well, half he, of Dutton's he, shop he was was, was vegetables, wasn't it? On the as you're going in on the right hand side, that bit as far as I remember was a well, vegetable when Mr. shop. Jolly was 
I well, think so. It. Well, they altered it, I know, because they, they, they stripped it all out and uh. refurbished it all the way through. So what happened to it after that, I don't really know. They've had one or two uh, different managers in, and then in the end they decided to sell it. And uh, Of course, at the end, where's the butcher shop? Yeah. That was he, he, that was our store warehouse then there that was, was all that was uh, no shop there then but he made that into a shop and opened it up and he uh, let's see he had Mr. Jack Harrison oh, yes. was there as manager for him and he built the the bungalow down chain lane on the left hand side where Mrs Ray lives yes yeah for um, Jack Harrison to live there and then manage the shop. Oh, right. So that's, then Bovington, I think, bought it after that. Yeah. One or two, it's changed hands. That uh, bungalow down the lane. Yeah. That's Bovington. He he was coal and he, he was, was a fish. Coal man. That's right. Coal and man. the fish shop. As well, well, well that was his brother had the fish. Oh, was it? Paul in in Bampton, he had a fish shop. Yeah. But uh, see, that's just been turned into a been, house. You know, been doing something. With it. You know, well, ever since Paul Bovington, because he died out. Uh, well, in the morning he was out there on the pavement. I think he dropped in on the pavement. Well, that, they never did anything with that shop until now, and nothing has been done. Yeah. He just, she just lived in there, but I think, yes. I think she's gone into a home. Now, yes, I think know. that's right. Yes, I remember yeah. her very well. Yes. I remember your mother too, um, because I was passing the house once where you are, and the side gate was open, and I could see it was full of hollyhocks. Oh yeah, it used to be a lot of hollyhocks. Yeah, it was actually, cool. and I said, oh, they're so beautiful. And the next time I passed and your mother saw me, she had a handful of seeds for me, or an envelope with seeds oh, in. Oh, did she? Oh, yeah. And so the hollyhocks that I've got here must be related to the hollyhocks in your in your garden. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they've just gone on and oh, on and on. Oh, we haven't got any now. You haven't got any now? No, I, no, yeah. I think they look really but, nice. But, uh, no, mother died in 1979. Did she? Yeah. Was your, uh, am I right to think your mother was a nurse? Is that? No. No. No, she was a school teacher. Oh, she Before was a school teacher. Before she was married, she was a school teacher at Sarah's Esther. Yes. Then when they got married and had the business, yes. she she was, uh, well, didn't want anything else to do then. She yes. was busy with the, the shop work. And, yes. But, uh, then when they, the father decided to retire, then this house where we live in, where I live in now then, is a, uh, that was on the market, so he bought that off of Mr. Richards, I think. Who's yeah. Or, or, or Mr. Parker, I think. I'm not sure it was Mr. Richards or Mr. Parker. Mr. Ernest Parker lived there, I know. And, no, that's uh, not a name I know. No, he had a small holding down, oh, yeah. down wheels. But uh, then we moved in there and, and stayed there until he, he died. I remember. 1963 father died, I think. That was when it was a very hard winter. And I got married in 64. And stayed there with mother. Mother died in 1979. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my first wife died in 1984. Mm -hmm. and, and I got married again in 1986 and I've been there. Ever since. Up, up, ever since, ever since, until now then. It's the house next door to Mavis Newing, um, other side of Churchy. Mavis lives in Probably Sherborne um, House and we're Sherborne yeah. Villa, next, uh, semi-detached with it. Sorry. It's a long time to have been in Bampton, isn't it? Well, since. I was I was born over the shop. Yes, yes. I was born in the, the uh, front bedroom that was over the shop. And I've only moved across the road, sort of thing. So. <laughs> But, uh, oh, it's been a lot of changes, so I think. Tell us the good ones. Uh, <laughs> and then you can tell us the bad ones. I don't know if there are any. <laughs> oh. No, I'm not one for change, really. But, <laughs> it is, but, uh, yeah. All right, tell us the bad changes then. What do you think's got worse? The traffic. Mm. Well, it's terrible that it is. Mm. The noise and yeah. up and down. Crossing the road, you have to look two or three times before you dare cross the road. Yeah, that has changed a lot. Yeah. No, what I wanted to see with that little paddock down the field, I always thought perhaps I was going to have planning permission for the bungalow up down there and live down there and move down there. But no, they, planning people said they won't grant planning permission down there. So 
Right. Uh, that would have been lovely and quiet for you. Well, it would have been quiet for me. And you still do the garden down there, don't you? Oh, I still do a bit down there, but it's got too much for me. It's all overgrown, it? I don't yeah. really want it. But I, uh, Maybe you could let somebody use it as an allotment. Well, I, I but you like your little bit, don't I, you? A, a lot of people have come and asked if they could have it. And I think, you know, if I, if, it, if I get people going in and out, people wonder, one of the last people that came and they wanted to come to go down there, could I have a bonfire down there? Could they take their stuff down there and have a bonfire? You know, I have everybody. Yeah. Uh, if I open the door to one, I just have everybody, people down there. So. Yeah. No, I just keep it to myself. It's a nice quiet place it. anyway, isn't it? But the only thing I did do about a couple of years ago, I offered it to the council for cheap housing. Yeah. They even turned it down, they didn't want it. They're crying out for land, for I know it's handy there for uh, flats or for senior citizens and just on the level to walk up and into Bampton. And yeah. Yeah. If they could put some up there and I could have one of them. But no, they, they turned that down as well. So, so what will happen to it? I don't know. How long ago was that? About two years ago. I'm surprised. Jonathan Phillips, I was talking to him over the gate down there, and, and he said to him, I said to him about it, and uh, he said, well, that was while he was on the council then. He said, would you like me to? I said, yes. I said, by all means. He said, you wouldn't get the full amount of. Um, uh, price for it, uh, building price. But he said you'd get, probably get about a half price for it. Well, I said that's fair enough, it'd be doing some good. Mm. And it'd be handy for me if, we could, if I could have a, they put some up down there because there'd be room for a half a dozen or so there. And he went to the council about it and then he had a letter back from them after about three or four months to say that they considered it, but no, it's outside the, it's outside the uh, boundaries of Bampton. So the building's a plot of land down Chain Lane. Down Chain Lane. Yeah. <laughs> Next door to Mrs. Ray, and on the other side is Locked Lodge, which is, oh, I don't be, know what the name is. Uh, that's um, Cowrie Rossi, Rossi, Mr. and Mrs. Rossi. I don't know, I know, always pass the time of day, it's been yeah. Rossi, isn't it? Yes, that's the surname, Rossi. She, uh, She's Norwegian. Norwegian, that's yes. right, they, you know, they put a flag out there. Yes, they do, on, I think, on yeah. her birthday. They're very nice people. But, yes, yes. Uh, no, and I applied in the first place was when uh, uh, Miss Graham Thompson and yeah. Miss Wiley were there. Yes. Yeah. When I applied for a, a planning function to put it, of course they were up in arms because they didn't want anybody down there. Yes. But there it is. It, that's all water under the bridge now, it's gone. So. Yes. So I'm sort of settled to where I am. Which is very nice, except for the traffic. It's, oh yes, but it's too big for us really, isn't it? And yes. I can't afford to put spend the money on it that it really wants money. It really wants uh, a lot of money spent on it to mm. bring it really up to date. But mm. it's, it's heating too, now it's going to be worse now. <laughs> yes. So, well, so I'm on a fixed income sort of thing, my income doesn't go up any higher. Everything no. else does. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Did you go, you went to Bampton Village School then? I went mm. there for about three years. And that's when and it was in church for you? That's when it was in church for you, yes. I went there. Then I went to, to Burford after I went Oh, to did there. you? I went to Burford. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who was your teacher in Bampton? Was it Miss Farmer? No, uh, Miss Hobbs. Oh, Miss Hobbs. I was, I was up. Um, when I first started school, I went to a little uh, kindergarten school, uh, Miss Rose, round. Uh, Lavender Place, round in there, mm. the big house there on the she used to take a few little children in there. I know yes. there was about seven or eight of us used to go yeah. there. Is that where the Phillipses live now? The, the, yes, yes, that's right, in, uh -huh. in the back of there. Can't remember the name of the house. Hator. Hator, that's it's oh, called yeah. Hator now. Yes. Mm. Where does the name Sherborne House come from? Do you know? No, it, it always was Sherborne House. It was Sherborne, yeah. yeah. It was Sherborne House. Well, well, we didn't change the name anyway, it was Sherborne. Yeah. Um, like I said, Mavis knew it was Sherborne House, and we were, and it was Sherborne Villa just to keep the two apart. But where yeah. it came from, I don't know. Yes, no, it's an interesting name in Bampton, isn't it? Somebody from 
a sure bone out now, probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your farming days, because that's the days when it was quite hard, wasn't it? You did have to get up, crack well, when what I was started, your, Did when you specialise? No, no, I didn't, no. I started for uh, Mr. Watts at Blackmorton when I was 16, when I left school at Burford. And I stayed with him for about 36 years, I think. But uh, he used to, I used to drive the, I drive the lorry, I used to go round to markets with uh, animals. And uh, he, used to, he used to show Oxford down sheep. And I used to take the shepherd out. And we used to go to shows. And if the shows were uh, a fair distance away, then it was too far to come back. And I used to stop there for two or three nights when at the show and, and bring them back when we were. Yeah. But, um, Oxford Down. Oxford Down sheep. Down sheep they're, they're, it's not well known. They're not now, no. No. Was it well known then? It was then, yes. There were a lot of Oxford. Down. There still are a lot, but mostly up in. Uh, Lincolnshire, I think. I really? Had a lot of Oxford Downs. What was special about it? Well, they were very big sheep, you know. Were they? And uh, of course, a big fleece. Of course, what was when wool was wanted as well. Yeah. And a big carcass. Uh, yeah. But now, uh, well, what they have today for uh, the store went back from Oxford, they did uh, Suffolk sheep. Yes. And they keep crossing out, you know, in different breeds and bought crosses for the meat. But and then they got, of course, they didn't want the wool. And so were the sheep on the farm here? On, in Blackboard? Uh, Blackboard, oh yes. They were, right. Yeah. Oh. I always think of them being further over in the, in the Cotswolds, in the hilly bits. Oh yeah, oh yes, well there was a lot of sheep there, but no, Mr. Watts had a flock of Oxford and sheep. Did you do any shearing? No, I didn't. I, no, the shepherd used to do the shearing, and yeah. one or two others used to do the shearing, but I didn't. But, uh, yeah. Uh, no, no the, uh, I had a big dairy herd as well, and I didn't have anything to do with milking either. I didn't like that. <laughs> you didn't like that? <laughs> no, I, no. I was tractor driving and lorry driving. Yeah. Then he retired, and his son took over. And uh, we didn't get on quite so well with his son, so I stuck it with there for a few years with him and then the job came up on Thames Water so I finished my days out on Thames Water. How did you? Uh, good job I did because I'd get a bit of pension from them I shouldn't have got anything off the farmer. <laughs> yes, yeah. How long were you with Thames Water? About 13 years. Yes. What sort of work was that? That was going around uh, manual work sort of yeah. thing, the pumps, looking after the pumps and pump houses. And oh yes, and yeah. No, quite interesting. Did you have anything to do with clearing things like this river? Was that no, no? That, no, that was the fresh water side of the Thames water. Oh, right. I wasn't on that, I was on the dirty water side. Oh, right, the, okay. Uh, I was up at the Carterton Works up there. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that was split into. Uh, well, the Thames water was split into three, I suppose, really. Yes. The Thames Conservancy it did all the rivers and the ditches and all of that. Yes. And uh, then the other did the well, the fresh water piping and that for the houses and all of that. Yes. And I was on the other on the sewage side. Yes. But when was Bampton sewage works put in? Oh, I can't remember. Was that in the fifties when the sixties? 60s, was it? When the main drainage came I can came remember about. them doing the main drainage, but that's a long time ago. I can't remember exactly when that was. Yeah. I think Marjorie Pollard had something to do with that. Well, I can remember Marjorie Pollard. Can you? Yes. And Miss Morton, that she lived Yes, there. yeah. I think they did a lot for the village. Oh, yes, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, she came to a sad end. Yes, Paul. that was sad, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I think they did a lot for the village. I think the Colvilles did a lot for the village. The Colvilles. Thinking of the farm and when you were there with Mr. Watts, he had dairy and sheep. Did he have arable as well? He had arable as well, yes. Yeah. And he also had the farm at Loo. He had a 500 acre farm at Loo, Manor Farm Loo. Oh. But that was all uh, 
Well, he did have, when I started, he did have a small dairy herd up there. Mm. Remember, they used to milk those up there in, in the shed there by hand. But then they had a milking parlor put in up there. And uh, he did a, milked a small herd up there. But uh, then they gave that up. But it was very heavy land up there. This down at Blackboard was very light soil, gravelly soil. But up yeah. at Lou, it was just the other way. It was all clay and very heavy land, and up to Topsy Wellington's in mud all the winter, sort of thing. Yeah, you got yeah. such a mixture around you, here. You mentioned the very bad winter in 62, 63 Six, winter. Yeah, 63, that was it. Yeah. I found it out in 63, that was it. I think it was 63, 64 the, when the bad winter was, I know. Terry used to go by tractor and trailer to Letchlade every day with the milk from all the farms. And yeah. all the churns on yeah. the trailer and he collected them up and yeah. more or less drove in a straight line because the snow was so deep and so compacted. <sighs> oh no, I, I can remember the, yeah. the terrible. Snow, that bad winter. Mm. Yeah. But it was a good job you did leave Mr Watts because he went bust. Soon after I left. <laughs> did he? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, I know. And, um, I can't remember just what it was anyway, but uh, I know he got out of the sheep before I left and he got rid of the lorry and when he asked and, and Richard took over and he was always chasing around for when he wanted, well, how long are you going to be doing this, and this one's doing, that one's doing, you know, you kept, and I got fed up with that, I thought oh, I've had enough of that, and so I got out, but then I know. And he went bust. He went bust, yeah. Did a lot of farmers go bust at that time, or was it just that that was a badly managed farm? Well, I... A lot of farms suffered hugely after the oil crisis in the 70s. Yes. Because yeah. the costs went up yeah. and the income didn't. Everybody calls you Billy. Are you happy? Yeah. 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 Or Bill. What would you rather have? Bill. Bill. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well. Most people, a few in Bampton, call, mother called me Billy, I suppose. But, yes, that's uh, probably but, where. Uh, it's no, I'm known as Bill Matthews. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I found mm. it very interesting hearing you talking about the shop and the life, the other side, because I was almost four when my parents bought the shop in Cheshire, and of course I, I wasn't really aware of what they did. My, the Sunday morning job for my sister and myself was weighing out and bagging up the sugar in the blue bags. Oh, oh yes. And I, because she was older than I was, I did the first weighing and I always had to put a little bit too much in and then Margaret had the, the very accurate scales because scales were checked yeah, oh, yes. by the ministry. Oh yeah, and I remember she, that. Do you remember she, that? Yeah. She, she would make it exact and then Dad would do the folding, and it always fascinated me how he could fold the top of the bag down, and it didn't spring open again. No, I remember when they, the weights and measures used to come to the town hall about every two years, and all the business people, that used, of course you have to weigh up with weights, and you had to take the weights up there, and then they were checked. Mm. And there, there was like a lead, in the bottom of the weight, there was a recess with, lead in there yeah. and they would stamp that if they were accurate and if they lost a bit of weight or wanted something they would put another little bit of lead in to make up Interesting. and then stamp it again. I so never heard about that. No. You see things like that see. are just yeah. so interesting. Oh, yeah. We can remember father having to say well, we got them to the weights and measures. They yeah. have to take all the weights up and they Do you remember them. which sweets were available just after the war in the shop? No, I didn't. <laughs> I Tiny. remember when they used to have the sweets all in the jars, and yes. they used to weigh them up. But I know. Were they in Dutton's shop? Were, were they? Did they have jars of sweets though? I can't remember that. I think we had jars of sweets. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I, I somebody remember. told me that um, now what was her name? Lived at the corner house down here. She used to sell sweeties. Mm. Oh yes, Mrs. Rogers. That's right. Mrs. Yes, Rogers. Mrs. Rogers used to sell just in yeah. the front room, so it was like yeah, a just mini in the shop. Front room that was just right. a yeah. little, thing. not a proper shop. And I can remember um, an old lady used to go around with a, one of these very big high prams. Old Mrs. Lamb. She lived down 
uh, by Fisher's Bridge there. She used to go around, she was a little old lady, used to shuffle around, and she used to have bits and pieces in her pram to sell. Sort what, of what sort of things? Well, I don't really like no, it. No, I don't really know. She had bootlaces and things, small yeah. things, I like suppose. Like a little peddler. Put, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. She was like a, well, yeah. I was asking about the sweets, because I, I remember we had sugared almonds, flying saucers, you know, which were, um, what do you call that paper that dissolves in your mouth? Rice paper. Rice, Rice paper. paper. And it was with a, a fizzy something inside. Um, there were Victory V's and Imps, and those are the four that I remember them. Imps, oh yeah, I can yeah. remember Imps. You can They're still buy little, those. Little black, little black ones. Little black ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The shape one out. Well, I can yeah. remember those. Yeah. Uh, great fun. Humbugs and boiled sweets, I remember. Where did you get the bread from that you sold in Dutton's? Was that We didn't sell bread. You didn't? No. The baker was. That, that's our, well, it's sold bread after we'd left it. But mm -hmm. We didn't sell bread because the constables were, they were on baking the on the then. other side of the road. Yeah. There. That was, the, was, it, was it still a dispensing chemist when your family well, had it? Not a dispensing chemist. He was a, on the chemist friendly, but he didn't have a license to dispense medicines. But he could sell made up medicines like cough mixtures and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but he, he didn't have a, a license to. Did it ever have a license? Not that I know of. It? it had the bottles in the windows, didn't it, to show that you could sell yeah, the yeah. cough pictures? Oh, yeah, the old car boys. Yeah. So, where would people go to get their medicine? Well, they had to go to Whitney to a proper. Didn't it? Oh, how awful! And, Whitney uh, on the bus or on the train? Well, I, on, I suppose so. I don't know, but no, I know. Father was never uh, qualified to put up to make up medicines. Mm. He could sell. That the you know, pet yes. medicines that were already put up, like cough mm. mixtures and things like that. Yeah. But uh, he he couldn't dispense them himself. When you were um, going to work as a sixteen-year-old, did you cycle to Blackburn? I cycled to Blackburn. Oh, yeah. And for how many years did you cycle back and forth to Blackburn? Only a year or so. I remember I got a little moped, or, or, oh, yeah. uh, a cycle master. He used to have a winged wheel. You know. yeah, yeah. But. Uh, no. How long before you got a car? How how old were you when you got your first car? Seventeen, I suppose. Oh, 18. seventeen. That was quite young then. Yeah. I bought an old Austin, old Austin Seven. Oh, I know what they're like. Yeah. Quite square, square, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It was a nineteen thirty-two one. I don't remember the yeah. age of it. But um, so I had that for a few years. Yeah. And I went to motorbikes and I motorboat a few motorboats and yeah. then I went back to an MG and. When, a bit. when you went to Burford School, where did you get on the bus to go to no, school? I didn't get on the bus, did I? Did you cycle all I the way? cycled all the way. Yes. That was a fair old cycle ride yeah. to school and back. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I went to Burford and I went, they put me in Burford Grammar School. What for? I don't know, because I didn't learn anything when I was there. But uh, <laughs> uh, I had to go, so, but I had, they bought me a bicycle and I had to bicycle from when I was 11 years old mm. till I left. And that would be down the hill, the bottom of the hill in Burford, would it? Burford yeah. Grammar School at the bottom? Yes, down, yes by the church yes. at Burford Grammar School. Down the so bottom up there. the hill on the way home? Yeah. Quite down a hill. Through, up through, um, usually came back Bryce Norton Way up White Hill, about a Burford up White Hill, until the, what was the A40 then? Well, it was yeah. the A40 now, I suppose. Mm. There wasn't so much traffic there. No. Down through Bryce Norton home, but... Yeah. Were, were you in a group, or was it just you on your own? Do you remember? Was there other uh, people cycling? Sometimes pick up one or two, one or two from Bryce Norton. Yeah. Used to, but, uh, do you no, remember that as fun, or do you remember that as real chore? No, I, I didn't. I just took it for granted, and that's what you had to do. And it, yeah. It was. Well, it wasn't very nice when it was wet. So mm. I <laughs> we had, had uh, capes and other things to put on, but mm. no. But one of the teachers there was, he lived in Bampton, Mr. Eden, and uh, he used to, he had a car to go back and forth, but only once do I remember, because Roland Eden, his son, used to go as well, <coughs> I mean, only once I remember he said that if we went down we could go in with him, but that's all. <laughs> uh -huh. That was wartime, wasn't it? Yes, mm. yeah, that was during the war, of course it was, yeah, oh, he left I left school in 1944, I suppose. 
just before. That's right. That's when I started work, 44, because the war was still on when I started work. Mm. Living in Bampton, did the war have much impact, or you just life went on? Life went on, I suppose. I <laughs> remember, well, I remember it, of course, but uh, not. Uh, was going back and forth to school, and that was it. You didn't take much notice. No. Used to hear the reports and on the news on the wireless and uh, it was when the Battle of Britain was on, they used to say how many planes had been shot down and one thing or another, but mm. and then they bombed the they came they dropped a bomb at Bryce North and I think on the aerodrome there once. And, mm. and there were two crashes, I think. It was a Wellington that crashed and Oh well, yeah, there were one or two aeroplanes uh, that did crash. Over beyond Weald, wasn't it? Yes, there was one came down the along there, I know. So many changes in one lifetime. There you go. Yes. Yes. I'll That's tell you what's going to happen to you now. Now we've finished, you're going to you'll go home and you think, oh, there was that. <laughs> That's you'll start thinking, oh yes, probably and there was that. Will. <laughs> you probably will because it's you're triggered <laughs> off thinking about those days. Yeah. You know, those days in the park. What do you grow down on your allotment now? Well, the usual veggies. Yeah, vegetables. Mm. That's all. Have yours been? Good this year. I they mean, have this year. We we found. Yeah, of um, course, it's been a growing season. Hasn't it it's has. been so wet. And, I mean, we found things like the carrots and the beetroots have done incredibly well. Yeah, and the runner beans have this year. But well, we last year I didn't have any runner beans because the chap down the lane there had got two goats. And of course, they got out when the runner beans were about that high up last year, and that a lot off. <laughs> of course, that was too late. <laughs> Have any more, yeah. and they yeah. nibbled the, uh, the apple tree and that down there, and well, a few little ash trees, and of course they strip all the bark off these yeah. goats. They do. Kills them. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, you he's got rid of them, so he's oh, all right he? this year. Yeah. <laughs> Were you flooded last year in July? Down at the bottom there uh, in the garden. Yes, it didn't last long, but did it kill what you had there? Well, I didn't tell you, but last year I didn't have much because these goats got out before and, that. And, right. And, and so mm. it was a bit of a disaster last year. And I don't grow any green stuff down there because I got fed up with the pigeons. You know, I have to put anything yeah. Pigeons were yeah. playing down there, there's trees all around, and they mm. just, as soon as you've gone out the gate, they'll swoop down out yes. themselves. So. Yeah. Slug problem or not? Sl well, yes, there's a lot of slugs. This about, big. Yeah. 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 Yes, me too. Yeah, I, yeah. And carrot fly, you too, know, I get that. The There's like some that are uh, immune or resistant to it now. There's one called really? Fly Away, which oh, yeah. doesn't get affected by them. Uh, if you get the seeds, Thompson and Morgan have the seeds. I know, I always used to use Bromophos, but you can't get it now. Yeah. Yeah. All the things that used to work are no yeah. longer available. Well, probably because they're bad for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you're still here. <laughs> exactly. That's right. They've decided that it's bad for you, so I suppose yeah. you have to take their word for it. But. Uh, <laughs> we had an old radio, it was battery operated, and, and, I, and I had to have an accumulator, mm. and uh, every so often we had to take the accumulator up to uh, a shop in, up in Bampton. Oh, Mr. Collett. Mr. Collett's, mm. and then he used to put it on charge, and uh, we had one at home, and you have to swap them over and take them up there, one to be charged up, and then you have them. Oh, when that one ran down, you took them up and had the other one back. But, well, I know with the old radio, you can fiddle in the boat with the knob to and you're trying to get them, then it would go away, you couldn't find anything. And, Always better uh, after dark. Yes, probably. Mm. <laughs> that is a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> we have television now. <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, yeah, I do. Right over then. Thank you very much for coming because I know you didn't really want to, and I'm really grateful that you I'm did come. I'm not a talker myself. I'm a, I'm a good listener, but I'm not a talker. Lovely. Thank you ever so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.